Good morning, everyone. This is April Bird coming with your daily word. Today, my topic is going to be your will versus God's will. And I'm going to come out of the book of Jonah. And what I'm going to be discussing is going to be actually all the chapters from chapter one through chapter four. Jonah is a small book, but it's going to be from the whole chapter. And as it begins, beloved, um, this is when God comes to Jonah and God tells Jonah to go and cry out to Nineveh because their sin and their wickedness has come to him. And Jonah, Nineveh is a great city. And God, te- God is telling Jonah to go there and cry out to them because of their wickedness and their sin. But Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. He did not want to go and preach to Nineveh because he knew that God was a forgiving God and that God would forgive them. And they were such a wicked people in this great city that they did not deserve to be delivered or forgiven. So Jonah said no. He didn't say no, but his action said no. So Jonah went to Joppa. He he went to Joppa and he actually took a boat away from there to go to Tarshish. And so as Jonah go as Jonah goes to Tarshish, he's on the boat by way of Joppa to Tarshish and he's on the boat and while everybody's on the boat, the boat God sends a tempestuous wind, a storm, a sea storm. So bad that everyone on the ship were afraid. So all the shipmaster, everyone, everyone is saying, call upon your God, call upon your God so we can, we can be saved. So Jonah was in the bottom of the ship asleep. So when the shipmaster went to Jonah in the, and found him asleep, he said, oh, you sleeper, get up and pray to your God so that we do not, so we, we are not destroyed so we can be saved. And so that's when the shipmaster asked Jonah, what is your God? Who do you serve? And that's when Jonah told the shipmaster that he was a Hebrew and that he served the true and living God. And the shipmaster was afraid. And he said, what have you brought up on us? And the people knew that Jonah had told them that he had fled from the presence of God. So the other people knew that. And so when he knew, they knew that he had fled from the presence of God, they were, they were very scared. So what they did is they had everybody to pray to their gods. But when Jonah told them he was a Hebrew and he prayed to the living God, the true living God, everybody, they cast lots and that lot fell up on Jonah. And when that lot fell up on Jonah, it was Jonah, the, the Jonah was the reason that the storm had came up on them. And they were like, why did you bring this up on us? What should we do? So Jonah told them to throw him overboard and and everything will calm down because he knew he was the reason why the storm, the tempestuous sea storm was there. It was God sending the storm after him. And so they were upset. They were sad because they did not want to, they did not want to throw Jonah overboard, but they knew they had to save their lives. So they prayed that they did not have this blood on their hands to uh, throw Jonah overboard, but they threw him overboard at Jonah's command. So they threw him overboard. And in the word, it says that Jonah, that God had prepared a fish for Jonah. God had prepared a fish for Jonah. And so when they threw Jonah overboard, they threw him and the fish took Jonah in his mouth for three days and three nights. So while Jonah was in this, and then when they threw him overboard, the seas calmed. And so when Jonah was in the fish, fish's belly for three days and three nights, Jonah had an epiphany. Jonah prayed to God. Jonah humbled himself and Jonah prayed unto the true and living God to save him. He reminded God of all he was to him and all he had done for him in the past. And he remembered who God was in his life. And he begged God to help him. And so on that third day and that third night, the next day, Jonah, the fish vomited Jonah out of his belly. And soon as Jonah was vomited out of the fish belly, 
the Lord went to Jonah and said the same thing. The Lord said, go to the great city of Nineveh and cry out to my people and tell them in 40 days, in 40 days, I'm going to destroy them if they don't repent. And so Jonah goes about a day's journey because the city of Nineveh is so great. It takes about three days to even travel the whole city. So this is a great city. So about a day's journey, Jonah goes and Jonah cries out to the city of Nineveh. In 40 days, God is going to destroy you if you don't repent. And so this word gets back to the king of Nineveh. And the king of Nineveh is so afraid and he believes God. He believes Jonah about what God is saying, sent him to say. So he rents his robe and he puts on sackcloth and ashes. And he calls, he proclaims a fast, fast throughout this whole great city of Nineveh. So for everyone that no one, not even a, a cattle will take a drink. He proclaims a fast. And so when the king of Nineveh proclaims a fast, God hears that and he sees their heart changing so God forgives Nineveh and Jonah was so upset he said I knew I knew that you were going to forgive them I knew you were the God that were going to forgive you were not going to uh, destroy them that's why I didn't want to come and I'm paraphrasing in my own April bird way but he's, that's why I didn't want to come because I knew you were going to you were going to forgive them these wicked people. So Jonah leaves and goes uh, far off, goes away off from Nineveh, from the city. And he sits, he sits down and he, cause he wants to see what's going to happen to this city. So God builds a gourd over Jonah to protect him from what he was going through. He was so upset. God built a gourd, a gourd over him to protect him from himself. All the anxiety and the stress that he was under because he was upset and angry. So by the next day, um, when he when he awoke, when Jonah awoke, uh, God created a worm to remove the gourd. And Jonah was upset because the gourd, he liked the gourd because it helped him, it comforted him. But God sent a worm to eat the gourd up to, and to move it, remove it from Jonah. And then God sent, uh, sent a vehemently storm, a wind storm, that Jonah even we hit Jonah so hard that the windstorm Jonah passed out. So when Jonah came back through, God reminded him, "Are you uh, Jonah? What Jonah said he wanted to die. I want to die. I don't even want to be here anymore. I want to die." And God said, "Oh, you want to die?" And God basically was saying to Jonah, "Is that you?" wanted he said you wanted me to kill a people Jonah was so angry I knew you were gonna save them and God said that gourd that I built for you that gave you peace it wasn't yours and that worm when I when I when I had it to take it away you still wanted to keep it but you didn't create it I did but you still wanted to create it you still wanted to enjoy it he said so are you that angry that you would want me to kill over six six thousand people and their cattle. Over six thousand people. You want me to kill all these people and their cattle because they don't know right their right hand from their left hand. But Jonah was upset. Jonah wanted Nineveh, this great wicked city. They were very wicked. They did all types of wicked things in, in this great city of Nineveh. And Jonah didn't believe that they deserved to live. He didn't, he didn't believe that they deserved to be forgiven. But God forgave his people. And he used his preacher. He used his minister, his man of God, Jonah, to go and do that. Because beloved, who we think don't deserve forgiveness. What about us? We don't deserve forgiveness either. So beloved, when our disobedience versus our will versus God's will, God still won because in the beginning of the story, Jonah fled. God told Jonah to go to the great city of Nineveh and cry out to them for because I will perish. They will perish. 
I will destroy them. But I want you to go and preach to them so they can repent. And Jonah did not want that because he didn't believe that the, the great city of Nineveh deserved to be forgiven. They were so wicked. They don't deserve forgiveness. But some kind of way, Jonah felt like he deserved forgiveness when he was in the fish's mouth, in the belly of the fish. He deserved to get delivered, but the great city of Nineveh did not. And sometimes, beloved, we try and measure the sin of other people to ourselves and we started to make a decision. Oh, I have only done this, this and this. They've done way worse than me. They don't deserve it. But beloved, that's not our decision to make. When our will versus God's will, beloved, God's going to win because God loves all of us the same. He doesn't have no big, big U's, little eyes, big U's, however they put that. God loves everybody, beloved. And God told Jonah to go to Nineveh and cry out to this great city. And Jonah did not want to go. So Jonah went to Joppa. And by way of Joppa, he caught a boat, paid the fare, and he went to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. And as you read it, you'll see that about three times it mentioned that Jonah went from the away from the presence of the Lord. And beloved, what we do when we want to walk in disobedient to God, disobedience to God, we will go away from his presence because we know as long as we stay in God's presence, we have to walk in obedience. When we go away from his presence, that means we feel like we can do what we want to do. We don't have to be obedient. But when jo when Jonah went on that boat and he was down on the bottom of the boat in the ship and God and the man came to him and that storm was that to Petrus, that means it was a, a big storm, a mighty storm came. God sent that storm on that sea and Jonah, then the shipmate went down to Jonah and told him, call upon your God. Who are you? Who is your God? We perishing. Everybody need to pray for their, pray to their God that we don't die. And when they found out who Jonah was, they were upset at Jonah that you would bring a thing like this up on us. And Jonah, they told Jonah said they had already, he had already told him that he was running from the presence of God. But I guess the shipmate didn't, shipmaster didn't know that. And so when they found out who Jonah was, and Jonah was a Hebrew, and that he served the true and living God, they were really afraid. And Jonah said, "Throw me overboard." And they even felt bad to throw him overboard because they didn't want that on their hands. But Jonah caused other people a problem because of his situation. Below, when God tells us to do something, we have to be obedient. Because when we run away to another place, we cause other people to stumble. We cause other people to get in trouble. By what God is, when God is after us, we pull innocent people into our mess. Fleeing from the presence of God, beloved. I don't know who this is for. And I always take everything for myself because we think, oh, someone else needs to hear this. Oh, this person needs to hear this. God has whoever needs to hear right here listening to it. And I am the one talking. So obviously I needed to hear it because I had to do the study. So I thank God for that. But love, it doesn't matter what someone has done or who someone is. God loves everybody the same. And God, his desire is that none should perish, that all should come to repentance. So if we feel like someone does not deserve forgiveness or we feel like someone does not deserve God um, to forgive them and to relent from doing what he was going to do to them because we feel like we've been doing the right thing and they've been doing the wrong thing. Beloved, that is not what God, that's not God's love. God told Jonah to go to the great city of Nineveh and to preach to them, to cry out to them. And Jonah said, no, Jonah went on about his business, doing his own thing. But when God sent that storm in that life, in his life, threw him in the belly of the fish, Jonah was, had an awakening moment, epiphany. And he, he wanted to be saved, but he didn't want someone else to be saved. He was in disobedience, but he didn't want somebody else to be delivered, but he wanted to be delivered. And we're not just going to beat Jonah up because we're the same way. We're Jonah's as well. I'm a Jonah as well. And we all must do better, beloved. But when God spit him up, let that, that big fish throw him out, vomit him up. Beloved, God told him the same thing. Go to Nineveh. Do what I told you to do. 
So God is not going to change what he told you, beloved. He's not going to change what he told me, beloved. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter who did it, how long they done it. It doesn't matter. God says, go to Nineveh. And that's what he means. And so when God tells us to go to Nineveh below, we might as well go ahead and go and, and take the trouble off of everyone else. Because when God has us doing something and when God wants us to walk in obedience, we're causing other people to stumble because we're, we're going, moving in, moving out of our territory, moving out of our rightful position, going into another place, causing other people to stumble, pulling other people into our mess when God has given us a command. Go to Nineveh and preach my gospel. So I don't know where God is telling you to go, beloved. But as we all can learn from the story of Jonah, and I pray that you would go back and read uh, Jonah verse chapter one through chapter four in your leisure and that you will, that God will be able to speak to you, beloved, because he definitely spoke to me and God is not going to change no matter where you go. Go try to go away from the presence of the Lord. God said, if you even go to the depths of the earth, I will be even there. So no matter where we go, we cannot run from God, beloved. Amen. I pray that you were blessed today. I pray that you were encouraged today. I pray that you were able to walk in obedience today. And I pray that you would allow God's spirit to help you to walk in obedience. Because our our obe disobedience, our will versus God's will, we're always going to end up back where God called us to go. Because God is sovereign. He trumps everything. And when he tells, he's a parent. And when your parent tells you to do something, it doesn't matter where you go and what you do. What did I tell you to do? So, beloved, we're going to close out in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name. We honor you today. We magnify you. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your word today, God. Your word is true. Lord God, we lift you up. We magnify your name. We honor you today. For you are God all by yourself. Now, Father God, we ask that you forgive us of any sins that we might have committed in your sight via thought, word, or deed, anything that we've not done that you told us to do. If we're being Jonah in an area, in some areas, we ask, oh God, that you would give us an obedient spirit, God. Allow our wills to be your will, God. Lord, help us to walk in obedient spirit. Lord, like you told Jonah to go to Nineveh, to preach to this great city, Nineveh, to cry out to them because their wickedness and their sin has reached you. And you wanted them to be able to repent, God, so you didn't have to destroy them, God. So, God, I thank you for your unmerited favor. I thank you for your mercy and your grace that you show to all, all of your people. Now, God, as we as people, sometimes we want someone else to pay for things that they have done to us or things that they've done in general. We don't think some people deserve forgiveness because of the detriment that they've done to other people or the, the crime that they've done, God. But God, that's not who you are. You are a loving and forgiving God. You're long-suffering. You're merciful. You're kind. You're everlasting. You're faithful. And you're forgiving God. So God, help us to have an unconditional heart like you, God. Help us to forgive like you forgive, God. Help us to forgive those that we don't think deserve forgiveness, God. Help us to be reminded of, help us to be mindful of ourselves, oh God. All that you have done for us. All of the things that we've done against you, God, that nobody knows about. Help us to be mindful of those things, God. So we can forgive others that have wronged us. Lord, when our will comes up against your will, help us to walk in obedience, God. Give us an obedient spirit. We dare not to beat up Jonah today because Jonah reminded us of ourselves. Jonah is our kinsman. Our kinsman. Jonah is our cousin. Jonah is our brother. Jonah is our friend. Because we are so close to Jonah in our lives today, God. 
We don't want Nineveh to, to be able to repent. We don't want a person to be able to repent and be forgiven and to come back and receive the good things because we don't think they deserve it. So God, cleanse our hearts with hyssop, renewing us a right spirit, God. Lord, help us to forgive and help us to walk in obedience and to let your will be our will, God. Lord, we're housed in this thing called flesh and we know that in this flesh dwells no good thing. Please forgive us, God. Please help us, God, not to go and to put other people in our mess to cause other people harm that had nothing to do with our mess. Trying to seek revenge. So God, we ask that you forgive us today. Give us a heart of forgiveness. Lead us and guide us this day, God. Help us to remember your word. Help us to go back and read Jonah and meditate on it day and night, so our days will be successful. Help us to walk in obedience and do what you told us to do the first time. But God, those have not done it. Those of us who didn't were not obedient the first time, Lord, thank you for your grace and your mercy that we have another chance to come to you and to ask for forgiveness and to go and do what you told us to do. So we thank you, Lord God, for being unconditional having an unconditional love, and being a forgiving God to all of us. Lord, we give your name, praise, honor, and glory. Lord, if anyone that does not know you and depart of their sin today, I pray that they will make today a good day. Know that today is a good day to accept you as their Lord and Savior, that they will confess you as Jesus and Lord, and they will believe that you died on the cross for their sins and that God raised you from the grave on the third day with all power in your hands. Help them to trust you today, Lord God, with their lives. We give your name, praise, honor, and glory. So in Jesus' name, we do praise you with thanksgiving. Amen.